A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I promised you guys a part two covering the Jank Uger portion of the Dennis Prager debate after the Anna Kasparian thing. Now, for you guys out there in my audience, you are in luck because this video will not be an hour and 10 minutes long because the two clips that we're going to go over are much shorter, meaning that I don't have to respond as much because there's not as much nonsense. Now, the first clip that we're going to go over is Jank Uger putting up on his own channel that Jank Uger schooled Dennis Prager on secularism. And the reason we're going to go over this is because it leads perfectly into our second clip where Jenk completely contradicts everything he says in this clip and Anna Kasparian jumps in with irrelevant information in order to bail Jenk out because unlike the title Jenk did not school Dennis Prager in this segment but before we get into this before we do our deep dive into this portion of the debate this video is in fact sponsored so we're gonna toss it to the ad read and then we'll come back over nya and discuss it on the other side. It has just been revealed that the average American is likely going to spend $177 more per month heating their home this winter. Now, this is due to obvious geopolitical reasons, but I don't know about you guys. I'm not really looking to go broke heating my apartment during the course of these geopolitical conflicts. This is one of the reasons why this video is brought to you by GetMiniHeater.com. You see, there's a fundamental flaw in your central heating system, and that is, for most of us, you have to heat your whole entire home or apartment at the time that you just want to be in one room and not freeze to death. Well, don't be a doofus. Don't do that. Get yourself a mini heater at getminiheater.com and heat the room that you're actually in so that way you can save on your overall heating bill. This thing pays for itself in a month. And for my audience out there, if you go to getminiheater.com, 45% off, 60-day risk-free trial. See if it pays for itself in a month. Getminiheater.com. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems like you're not in favor of secularism. So I wanted to ask about that. Um, so I never understand what you folks mean when you, you say we shouldn't be a secular country. Um, do you think religion should rule us? What, what do you mean? I think that we should have a secular government and a religious population just as the founders did. That's why in God we trust is one of the three mottos of our country. So there are two things that I want to point out related to this portion of the conversation, and I think they're both crucial. The first one is, of course, the lower third, the Chiron that the Young Turks chose, which says secularism versus the far right's quest for religious dominance. Totally a sensible framing of what's going on in this conversation, not ridiculously over the top, comically biased for any reason. And the second thing that I want to point out is the answer that you just heard from Dennis Prager. Dennis Prager thinks that our government should be secular. It should not have a religion, but he wants the population, the people to have religious values. And since the majority of the United States now and historically, even though it is waning in recent years, is Christian, he wants the majority of the United States to be religiously Christian. He thinks a religious population with a secular government that doesn't pick between denominations is the way to go. And traditionally throughout American history, that's basically how they function. And he says this as somebody who is a practicing religious Jewish person. So that is what he said. Jenk asked the question. There's no point of Jenk asking the question because he's just going to put words in Dennis Prager's mouth immediately after he gives the answer. But just so you can understand Dennis Prager's position, because it's going to get completely lost by Jenk, I wanted to lay it out and restate it for you in a steel man way. And we are now seeing the consequences in every area of life of the death of Christianity, and I say this as a religious Jew, the death of the Judeo-Christian value system, the death of the Ten Commandments, and the death of all the things that came with religion, meaning and community uh, and, and uh, moral absolutes among them. The, 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 the death of, of religious values is why we can now say there's, uh, th there are more than two sexes and that we shouldn't call kids boys and girls in schools anymore. We are living in the age of moral and intellectual chaos because of the death of religion. So again, Prager concludes his position. You guys all understand it. Everybody understands it. This is a basic conservative position that people understand across American history. They understand it right now. But you could see Cenk Uger's anger building up as they're having this conversation because Cenk Uger is totally intolerant to any beliefs that aren't his own because he's the actual fanatic in this conversation. 
And obviously, we're going to go off the rails immediately, but I just wanted you guys to have that one minute of solace, that one minute moment where Jenk asks a question and then Dennis Prager gives an answer in good faith before we jump off the rails. Okay, so uh, poll just came out uh, today, I think, actually. 61% of Republicans say we should be a Christian nation, but don't get them twisted. They're not saying, hey, just be Christian at home. 57% of them, of Republicans, say, no, we know it's unconstitutional. We know that it's not in the Constitution. We uh, can't establish a religion, but we want to do it anyway. 61% say, no, I, we want it. So that seems to be establishing a religion, Christianity. Uh, do you think 61% of Republicans are wrong? So Jeng brings up these poll results, and they actually come from Politico, and I want to bring them up for you guys to hear them so you can understand what's actually being asked because I think it's crucial. So if we go to the Politico article, and by the way, these have the same percentages, we can break down what's actually going on with this poll. So the first question asks is if these participants believe the Constitution would even allow the United States government to declare the U.S. a quote-unquote Christian nation. And they found that 70% of Americans, including 57% of Republicans, said no, the Constitution would not allow this. Now, 43% of Republicans and 20% of Democrats, 30% of the overall respondents, think that it would, and this is ridiculous, it's just not true. Congress shall make no law establishing religion, kind of the whole deal right there but whatever. And then it says, would you favor or oppose the United States officially declaring the United States to be a Christian nation, end quote. Now, in this version of the poll, it says 62% of respondents said that they oppose such a declaration, but 62% of Republicans supported declaring the United States a Christian nation. And then it draws the conclusion, which Jank is just quoting from verbatim. In other words, even though over half of Republicans previously said such a move would be unconstitutional, the majority of Republicans would support this declaration. Now, two things. One, this is not a great poll, and it's not that great for what Jank is trying to put forward. First of all, it's not great because it's not a great look for Republicans. But secondly, you can actually break down the questions. And the first one said the government declaring, and then it says the United States officially declared that were a Christian nation. So that could explain the disparity in what people think is constitutional versus what people would want as their preference. Secondly, the way that Jank lays this out is that he essentially makes the argument that over half of Republicans know this is unconstitutional, but they're still in favor of it. However, 43% of Republicans, incorrectly, don't think this is unconstitutional, and that makes up the overwhelming majority, more than two-thirds, of the people who are saying most likely that they would be in favor of it. So if 43% don't believe it's constitutional or don't believe it's unconstitutional, as it says in this poll, and 60 something percent, 61% are in favor of making this a law, then you could probably bet that the majority of those who are trying to make this the law, if you read the poll in that way, come from that 43%. So it's not like 57% of Republicans think it's unconstitutional and a huge portion of those same percentage of Republicans are the ones who want it to be declared uh, an official religion of the United States. On top of that, what you have here is something about establishing a religion through the government. That is a key word in the first portion of the poll, which would obviously be more off-putting to Republicans, to then the next one, which is declaring the United States to be a Christian nation, which is not necessarily saying that we are governed by Christian law and not United States law. Now, Dennis Prager makes this point throughout, but I just wanted to lay it out to you from the poll because Jenk kind of tries to drop this on Prager without really explaining it, and I think a solid explanation, a good foundation of what we're talking about would be necessary and conducive for a good debate. They didn't say they want to establish a religion. They said they wanted a Christian country. I'd rather have a Christian country than a secular country, and I'm a Jew. Okay, so help me understand what a Christian country means. Doesn't that mean you a establish country, religion, people, Christianity? No, no, established. The, there was never an established religion in the country, and Christians aren't for it. I work with Christians. I, I, I know I, I work more with Christians than with, with Jews. My synagogue is okay. Jews, but I work with Christians. I'm at churches all the time. I never heard one of them say, let's establish Christianity. Well, what does it mean? The but Protestants it, believe deeply in the separation of church and state. I, I don't see that at all, and it's not in the poll. 57% said, yeah, we know it's unconstitutional. 
They mean establish a religion. Now you're trying okay. to make it like uh, okay. that the Republicans don't then, actually then, mean then, that. Then, then, so what do they mean when they say we want a Christian nation, not like the one that's in the Constitution? So right here you have Dennis Prager explaining what he just explained earlier, which is this poll might be indicative of the fact that you have a Republican population that wants the overall population to be religious, but that doesn't necessarily mean they want to live under Christian rule. And Jenk completely misses that, so he restates it, and he states the exact fallacy that I was talking about by saying that the same 57% that think it's unconstitutional know that they want to live without the constitutional mandate and have an official state religion, when logic would dictate that the majority of the people who don't want the U.S. to declare a Christian nation, whatever that means, which is much vaguer than the first question about whether or not the government can establish a religion, actually are the same people. I would say logically they're not, but Jenk disagrees because Jenk is trying to paint the case of extremism. Right. I don't know the constitutional part. This is brand new to me, so I, I can't comment. I can only tell you that when Christians say they want a Christian nation, they want a nation that is governed by Christian moral principles and, and not the moral chaos that we see today. And I am a supporter of that notion. Governed means the state. And I but anyway, believe, go ahead. I, so there you have Dennis Prager laying out that what he's talking about is they want them to be governed by moral principles that come from Christianity. And Jenk says governed means the state because he doesn't understand the difference of what Dennis Prager is saying and what he's trying to paint it out to be. Jenk's trying to deliver a caricature. So let me give you a perfect example of what we're talking about. Declaration of Independence talks about how we are all endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. And the idea behind this, at least from Thomas Jefferson, is the idea that if God is perfectly free and we are created in God's image, then man is perfectly free. Another example of this is the fact that we traditionally have 12 jurors. The reason we have 12 jurors, and you can look this up for yourself, is that Jesus supposedly walked with 12 apostles. So everybody should have the right, again, God is perfectly free, man is perfectly free, to have their fate judged by 12 wise men. Obviously, that's expanded to women. But again, these are things that are carryovers from the Christian ethic that are not necessarily religious imbuement into our government for those of you who don't understand. We also have the basic principle of self-defense, the idea that if somebody aggresses upon you, this comes from the Christian just war theory, then you can defend yourself against that aggression, and a bunch of other things that you can tie to Christianity as a philosophy, but don't necessarily mean that you have to be Catholic in the United States of America, or you have to be Protestant in the United States of America, or we're going to have the Church of England as the official church in the United States of America, which, by the way, is actually a kind of interesting thing, because the Church of England is still technically the Church of the United Kingdom, but they're far less religious than the United States of America. This is one of the reasons why many religious people don't mind the secular government, because it's actually allowed the people of the United States of America to flourish religiously in a way that the old world, Europe, seems to have forgotten. So, yeah, that's the explanation of it. I know it might get a little convoluted and you might have learned a little something about where certain things in our government actually come from, but that's the basic premise of what we're talking about. So I'm sorry, I don't believe I don't believe in Christ just for the record. I am not a Christian and they they are not forcing and they never did force anybody to believe in Christ even when they were really in power. They never forced one American to accept Christ. That's a pretty damn good record. That's because it's not constitutional. You're making it seem like they had the option. <laughs> So then Dennis Prager makes a much more salient point, and Jenk, it completely goes over his head because he's an utter buffoon. In the United States of America, we've had way higher rates of religious participation. A huge portion of the population was not only religious, but they were overwhelmingly Christian, and it wasn't forced by law upon other people to practice those religious beliefs. That's the point that he was making. And Jenk says that's because it's unconstitutional, but in reality, a lot of the separations of church and state, the decisions that say you can't have you know, prayer in school and all that are relatively recent. They're products of the modern era. Era, but overall, they just did not have this compulsion towards religiousness, even though we had a significantly more religious population. So, Jenk, they could have easily changed the Constitution if they were so inclined when 90 to 95 percent of the country was specifically some form of Christian. They didn't do that, which is a solid record, which is the point that Dennis Prager wants to make. Now, there were more religious influences on the law in the past. Prayer in school is an example of that. That's why I brought it up. 
But again, this really started to change once we stopped localizing education and we started bringing it up to the federal level because originally these constitutional protections were only really applicable to the federal government. That's why the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law and the 14th Amendment incorporation cases and that whole realm of law really came post-Civil War. But, you know, whatever. Why even focus on the history? Let's just babble incoherently and get angry and have Jenk make dumb points why even go into the constitutional history of the United States of America and American jurisprudence? So I want to ask. Well, wait a minute. Uh, okay, wait. Go ahead. You just said if they have power, you're afraid, correct? Well, first of all, Isn't no, I didn't say that. But I, no, I didn't say okay, that. So but but I, Dennis, I but Dennis, correct. yeah, I'm worried that your you know, dear leader, Donald Trump, doesn't believe in democracy. He's going to, uh, he said he, he had a system to put in fake electors. Now you got 61% of Republicans say, screw it, let's just be a Christian nation. Let's just stop basically be run by a Christian mullah. Okay, and so do you think okay. Trump wouldn't uh, say I'm that mullah and we're not having democracy? He'd do that in a second. Okay. You think that he cares about the rest of us? A lifelong con man who only cares about his own power and wealth. If you can't see that, Dennis, you're being purposely blind. So here you have Cenk Uger babbling uncontrollably and being totally nonsensical and talking about Donald Trump, but not only Donald Trump as a dictator, which is a bit of a stretch in my opinion, but Donald Trump as a Christian mullah. Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States of America, is somehow going to declare himself, according to Cenk Uger, and this is something that Trump would reasonably do, a Christian mola. Now, I know Donald Trump says he's a Christian. I know Donald Trump says he's religious and all of that. But Donald Trump also has a record of cheating on every wife that he had, hooking up with porn stars, and one of my favorite moments of the Republican primary campaign with Donald Trump is the fact that he brought out a Bible that his mom gave to him, but during him telling the story of this Bible, he talked about basically getting it out of storage because obviously he wasn't reading the Bible. If you don't believe that Donald Trump is probably the least religious Republican president, maybe the least religious president we've ever had, maybe the there's some that are just not really that religious that are actually secret atheists or whatever, but publicly the least religious president that we've ever had, then you're not paying attention. This guy does not want to establish Christian Mullinist or anything like that. Remember, his favorite kid is Ivanka Trump who converted to Judaism to marry Jared Kushner. If you think Donald Trump is a religious supremacist, you're insane. And Cenk Uger, I got news for you. You just said that you believe that and you are in fact insane. The man was president for four years. He was far more open than Joe Biden and the Democrats are who are using the FBI to suppress dissent and who are using the New York <laughs> Times and open. CNN. This is the least free America has been in its history Dennis. in terms of free speech and freedom of dissent. And it's because of the Democrats and the left. So Dennis makes the point that the Democrats in power right now are far more intolerant to dissent, are far more authoritarian than the Donald Trump administration ever was. And this is just provably true. Look at what's going on in social media companies. And by the way, this isn't something that I'm just alleging. This isn't something that I'm just asserting. We have official statements from the White House about how these social Social media companies need to crack down on quote unquote misinformation. We had that lawsuit where the doctor sued Twitter based on a breach of contract, and he discovered through the discovery process that Twitter was actually specifically asked to ban him from the platform based on recommendations from people within the Biden White House. So, yes, this is exactly what they're doing. On top of that, you have the FBI investigating or putting out letters to investigate parents that show up to school boards who are unhappy about what's being taught in their K-12 through education, and all these other ways that the Biden administration is using both soft and hard power against political opposition. These are just facts. Anybody can look them up. Anybody can see them. It is quite troubling. It is quite treacherous. And the idea that you can lose access to your payment processors, your social media companies, your means of income, specifically due to the fact that the Biden administration doesn't like what you're doing, it should be troubling to all Americans. This is essentially an accelerated portion of Obama's Operation Choke Point, which for those of you who don't remember, was an operation where they threatened financial institutions that did business with supposedly criminal actors and that caused them to drop the accounts of those people. Now, you might say no big deal if we're talking about drug dealers or whatever, but in reality, the way that this took effect is that a lot of legal, federally licensed firearm dealers 
would lose access to their financial information due to the fact that Obama was trying to do an end around the Second Amendment. So this was a real thing that happened. And by the way, it wasn't just firearms people. It happened to people in adult industries. Again, anybody could look it up. I'm not making it up. It's all out there in the public. And Biden is doing this, but he's not even doing it as formally as Obama. So we can't even get the same oversight and the same ability to challenge based on the people in these industries. So yes, this is a problem. But watch Anna Kasparian jump in to bail out Jenk by bringing up something irrelevant. Trump was Obama in had taken classified anything. documents from the White House home with him. And if the federal government with the DOJ gave him multiple chances, multiple opportunities to just return the classified top secret documents, and he didn't do it, and that led to a raid, would you be on the show right now providing cover for Obama? I'm, I'm genuinely curious, if, I want you to give if, me an answer. If it were part of a systemic use by a Republican government, of suppression of Democrats, I would damn well be on this program saying he that. He had every opportunity to just return the Trump. documents and he refused to do it. So Anna asked her question and she's like, oh, multiple opportunities and all of that. And Prager says, if the Trump administration or any Republican administration were weaponizing the mechanisms of government to go after his political opposition, he would be opposed to it. And then Anna's like, oh, he had every opportunity. But Prager's like, listen, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. This is not about the FBI raiding this particular situation. You brought that up and you're trying to change the subject because Cenk Uger, I don't know if you guys remember, was talking about how Donald Trump is going to declare himself a Christian mullah, the man with three different wives, the man who cheated on every single one of his wives with his next wife and cheated on his last wife with a porn star very famously and pays off all these women, is going to declare Christian rule according to Cenk Uger. So Anna... Thanks for bailing Jank out. I know you guys need a two-on-one. You did terrible in your portion of the conversation, but this is pathetic and it has nothing to do with anything that we're talking about. No yes. one should be held above the law, in my right. opinion. I mean, I don't think that should be controversial. I don't care if it's a Democrat. I don't care if it's a okay. leftist. I don't care if it's a Republican. You can't break the law repeatedly and just assume that you're entitled to be treated above the law. Why do you think the it's okay FBI, to provide cover for criminality FBI. like okay. that? So I also love that Anna Kasparian strategy right here. And it's so transparent. For those of you who can't see it, it's just amazing. Is to just filibuster. Dennis Prager looks like he's about to make a point, respond to what Anna's saying, and then she slows down her speech and talks even more so that she can distract and totally pull away from what we're talking about. Again, Dennis Prager doesn't support Republicans breaking the law. He already answered that question, yet Anna's like, why do you think that it's okay for Trump to say he's above the law? Dennis Prager's like, I don't I don't think that. She's like, well, why do you think nobody should be above the law, Dennis? I think nobody should be above the law. Why do you think that he should be above the law? Again, pathetic, Anna, in every possible way. Let me let me tell you what, what every one of us who uh, is a conservative believes, no, knows. There are political prisoners in the United States for the first time in American history, and it's because the left is in power. And there is no instance in the history of the world since Vladimir Lenin of the left being in power and allowing dissent. It was liberals in power in the past with Democrats. Today it is leftists. There is a huge difference. I wrote of 32 differences between liberalism and leftism in a column that anyone can find on the internet. I'll give you one example. Leftists believe in all black dormitories like at Columbia University where I went. Liberals do not believe in all black dormitories. There is nothing in common between liberalism and leftism. Leftism is evil, liberalism is honorable. And what we now have is the left doing what it always does, suppress dissent. So there you have Dennis Prager succinctly breaking down the differences between liberalism and leftism. He talked about how he wrote a 32-point essay on the subject. Anybody can look it up. And he brings up one of the things that leftists are in favor of, which is segregated dorms based on race, that liberals would be vehemently opposed to. And he talks about how historically the left always censors, they always crush dissent, and this is what he's seeing from the modern Democratic Party, and this is what he finds so troubling. Now, Jenk is going to give the retort, and by the way, I just want to state, it's not in dispute, it's an absolute fact that colleges in the United States of America have black-only dorms, segregated dorms, segregated graduation ceremonies, and all that jazz, but let's see Jenk's response to those absolute facts. Yeah, that's absolute nonsense. Thanks for watching The Young Turk. So Jenk says it's absolute nonsense, and then they cut away from it right away, even though that's exactly what's happening. Again, 
Give you any example that you want, social media companies taking direction from the Democratic Party, from the White House, to pull certain individuals for wrong thing off their platforms because they're saying they're spreading misinformation. Jenk is in favor of this, by the way. It happened. The examples that Prager gave, all these different examples of what's going on, but Jenk just says that's nonsense, and then they cut away in the video. But don't worry, we're going to go to the next portion of the video because it's absolutely hilarious, and it's related to the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Florida, if you you don't agree with the Israel far right wing government of Israel. They will actually take contracts away from you. They will they will hurt your livelihood. That is the government regulating speech. I assume you've spoken out against that and you've been vituperative about it, right? To the extent that a person advocates BDS, which is the economic destruction of Israel, and should be allowed to advocate it, I think they should be allowed to advocate it. That's right. So we open up with Jenk talking about how certain states won't do business with certain organizations or individuals that advocate for BDS, boycott, divest, sanctions, which is a plan to bring about the economic destruction of the Israeli government. Now, Dennis Prager says, if you want to advocate for this, you're totally fine. Now, I find it kind of interesting that state governments, according to Jenk, should be obligated to do business with people who are running contrary to American foreign policy. But overall, I actually do agree that some of these pieces of legislation, even though you end up in a situation where you don't want to state fund and state support people that are contradicting American foreign policy abroad on the state level are a bit ridiculous. I mean, you've seen circumstances in the United States of America where they won't do business with certain organizations within their state, but then they have no problem boycotting other states. And in our constitution, you can't boycott other states. Like there's no trade barriers between them that's actually in our constitution. And Prager seems to be on the right side of that issue. However, I do want to point out that there can be conditions to which the government gives you money that are not necessarily violations of your free speech rights. So it's not an open and shut case, but overall, I wouldn't be in favor of these conditions. In Netanyahu is no longer in, in government. Why are you calling it far right? Yeah, I, you think that Naftali Bennett got any better or the uh, current person that's in charge? They're all right wingers. None of them want uh, Palestinians to be free. They think Palestinians aren't really fully human and can't be trusted to run their own government. They deny them wow. a state. And so, but but let's get back to America. January no, 6th. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't throw out bombshells and then move on. All right. So what I found really funny right here is the fact that Cenk apparently wasn't trying to make this a whole conversation about Israel. He was just trying to sideswipe Dennis Prager. And Dennis Prager's like, no, 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 we're not going to have that. Because if you heard what Cenk said, he said that the Israeli dominant view is that the Palestinians aren't fully human whatever that means, which is just a way to paint the Israelis as some kind of vicious monsters or whatever, when in reality, in actuality, if you were to ask the average Israeli, are Arabic people human? Are people in the Palestinian territories human? They would say yes, and you would not likely get the same results if you ask people from the surrounding Muslim nations about the Israelis. It is clear who has a more bigoted view of who in this issue because the only reason these people hate the fact that the Jewish state exists in the Middle East is because it is a Jewish state in the Middle East. Let's make that 100% clear. You, you think that the Israeli government or the average Israeli who voted for this government thinks that the Palestinians are not fully human? Absolutely. Then why don't you let that? them go? Why can't they have their own state? Because it'll be run by Hamas. Are you foolish? So then Jake's like, why don't you let them go? Why don't you let them go? Notice how, by the way, it's becoming a you thing. Dennis Prager is an American. He lives in the United States of America. But Jenk is asking Dennis Prager, why don't you let them go? Why don't you, Dennis Prager, let them go? Isn't that interesting how he shifted to that situation? And I love Dennis Prager's response. He's like, it would be run by Hamas. Are you foolish? Do you not understand that? No country would willingly submit themselves to creating an enemy state right on their border that dedicates themselves to the destruction of their country. The idea that we expect this from the Israelis has always been really odd to me. And I say this as somebody who's not a religious person and the reason that matters is because some of the biggest supporters of Israel are evangelical Christians and I have no horse in that race or anything like that I just look at it look at the coverage look at how people talk about this state 
and it's really goofy to me. Okay, so what? Uh, you, so what? The right wing, uh, violent government of Israel kills Palestinians all the time. Okay. So you're it's saying, easy. wait, no, no, but okay, you're good, saying good. the Palestinians cannot govern good. themselves. Isn't that okay. what you're saying you as believe. a fact? So then Jake's like, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, let me tell you what you're saying, Dennis, and I don't know why you got to let them go. It's it's very, very odd, again, choice of language. But he's saying, you're saying that they can't govern themselves because I'm trying to make the case that you don't think the Palestinians are human, which, again, is absurd. You can be human. In fact, you are human and still make horrible choices and make reasons why I, as somebody living in a country that would be opposed to the nation that you're trying to build would likely not want you to have a foothold. It's kind of absurd. It's like saying that if you don't want a democratic city to continuously be run by Democrats, then you think the people in those cities are somehow subhuman. It's absurd. It's a ridiculous argument, but Jenk brings it forward. You believe that there is moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas. That's all I needed to hear. You're to literally use. saying they're not equal. You're saying the Palestinians they're and the Israelis totally are not equal. equal. We have to violently government. oppress them the for the rest of their lives. How long is the occupation going to go? How long are you going to keep millions of Palestinians as prisoners because you think they're less than human? So again, Cenk's like, how long is the occupation going to go? How long do you want to keep them prisoner? Again, Cenk, Dennis Prager, American. He happens to be a Jewish American. But he is American, Jank. I, I I think you're getting a little crazy right here. I'm starting to see your cray crayness, and it's really troubling. And again, it just goes to show you how Jank sees this issue, which is an issue of identity. Jank used to be a Muslim. He's no longer religious, so he's on Team Islam in this case. And it's totally running contrary to what he was saying earlier, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Okay. Israel doesn't want to commit suicide because you sitting in America have it good, okay? Okay, if so you're saying never, right? You're you're, oh, you're going to imprison Palestinians no, no, for the no, rest of time. Is that correct? When the, Palestinian, when the Palestinians disavow terror and stop trying to destroy Israel and don't announce that they want to destroy Israel, Dennis, there will be peace. Dennis, uh, they have done that in the past. You said not good enough. But the current state of affairs is the absurdity of the Israelis saying, we will not allow you to have a state because you theoretically say that we cannot have a state when we already have one. But no, you're literally no, preventing no, them from being having a state. Us. So since you are preventing them, doesn't that make you a monster who doesn't believe in freedom? And then all of your empty talk about, oh, how much you love freedom is total garbage because you don't think it applies to Palestinians. You could just see the asymmetric building of anger on Cenk's side, how he has to put words in Dennis Prager's mouth, how he has to attack him. But I just want to point out that Cenk is talking about how Dennis Prager is a hypocrite on freedom. And as Kirk Wilcox brilliantly pointed out in his video, this is in fact Cenk Uger being a hypocrite on freedom. Remember, we started this by talking about a poll about Americans who said they want a Christian nation. Now, Jenk took that to say that they want religious mullahs running the country, even though that's not what was indicated in the poll, in my view and in Dennis Prager's view. However, Dennis Prager points out that when the Palestinian people or people in the Palestinian territory got to hold elections, they elected a theocratic regime that wants to kill the Israelis. And Jenk says that's freedom in that case because according to Jenk, you have the freedom to install a religious rule. By the way, they had only one election. Weird how that works. Only if that religious rule is not Christian and apparently not Jewish, even though Israel is largely a secular country, it's made for religious and non-religious Jews. So Jenk, you're being the hypocrite right here. You have a weird way of thinking. Great well, answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why do the Palestinians have the same freedom that every other human being has? Okay. If you allow me to speak, I'll tell you why it's weird. You believe there is a moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas. That is morally sick. And I love the fact that Dennis Prager is just mocking Jenk by pointing out that he's trying to make a moral equivalence between Hamas specifically and the Israeli government. And Jenk is getting mad. And then Dennis says, you're sick. And by the way, you notice that Anna has to chime in because she's still there because Jenk needs backup as Jenk is going into full meltdown mode. That is morally sick. You are sick. Look, I'm going to play the rest of Jank's little spiel, but is it not ridiculous that Jank, like a five-year-old, gets told that he's sick for a specific reason, and Jank's response is to yell louder that Dennis Prager is sick, but he's really, like, emphasizing it, so that way he could be like, I know you are, but what am I, even though Jank is clearly the hypocrite in this instance right here. But let's watch Jank get really angry because it's hilarious, and we got to see it. That is morally sick. You are sick for not allowing Palestinians, millions of them, to be free. You don't believe in freedom, Dennis. 
You believe in oppression okay, as long as it's on your side. Right. Why can't they be free? Why can't Palestinians right. be free? Because they will choose a government you don't agree with? That is the definition of oppression. Again, notice what Jenk is doing. He says Dennis Prager doesn't believe in freedom. Republicans don't believe in freedom because of a poll related to a Christian country, even though that doesn't necessarily mean run by the government. But now he's saying that Dennis Prager, you're just saying the Palestinians would choose a government that you don't like, even though the actual government that they chose in that context was a religious theocratic terrorist government. So Jenk, where do you stand on whether or not you can have theocratic rule? Where where do you stand on whether or not you could have the mullahs running the country? Because it seems like you're perfectly okay for it as long as it's not in the United States of America, as long as it's not in any Western country, as long as they're not Christian, having religious rule. You just support them and you bring it down to a cultural difference. And notice how Jenk is trying to frame it in terms of oppressor or oppressed. You're in favor of the oppressor, Dennis, because that's how Jenk views it. He thinks the Israelis have more power because the Israelis are a better run country and their military is more sophisticated therefore they're in the wrong which is an absurd notion and dennis will explain it and i'll explain it too just so you guys know okay there you go okay the people heard my position they heard your, your, your position is just to be clear the palestinians Hamas, cannot be free Hamas, they're not they are not they're not equipped to handle freedom is that your position at this point they would elect hamas when israel left what israel did what you want and left the uh, uh left gaza it ended up being run okay. by the terror organization would, called Hamas. So they would Is elect someone you don't agree with. And hence, no, they no, are they not allowed to have freedom. They, yes, <laughs> what a big advocate of freedom of speech you are, Dennis. Wow, a shining advocate for freedom who says, if you don't elect who I want, you will never be free and you'll be under our thumb and under occupation. You will never have your own country. That's literally what you're saying, Dennis. Cenk, you can spout off a bunch of nonsense and then say, that's literally what you're saying, Dennis, but it doesn't make it so. Notice how Cenk can never debate anybody in good faith. Cenk can never have an argument with somebody without trying to restate their position in the most straw manny, nasty way humanly possible. This is what he does, and he labels this political analysis. It's absolutely absurd. It's absolutely insane. And again, credit where credit is due to Kirk Wilcox for pointing Pointing out the utter and stunning, unblemished hypocrisy in Jenk claiming that the Palestinians electing religious terrorist leaders is somehow really okay and it's just freedom. But in the United States of America, people saying that they want the population to be Christian is somehow authoritarian is going to lead to Mullah Trump. No, it's not at all what I'm saying. You're saying, saying if you that elect people I don't want, Hamas in this case, saying, you're I'll never allowed to be free. Again. So who do you want him to elect? Dennis Prager as the head of the Palestinian uh, government? Is that what you want? Then you allow them freedom? Would you even do that? You would never allow them. Why can't Palestinians be treated in the same exact way as every other human being? Let me know when I can speak. Again, I love this response. I love the tone of voice from Dennis Prager because it really emphasizes how unhinged Cenk Uger is. He's just screaming. He asks a question, Dennis gets ready to answer, and then Cenk screams something else, another straw man of his position. So Dennis is like, just let me know when I can speak. Let me know when you're done with your stupid rant, and I'll take you to school on this issue. And he does. Have we reached the point that I can speak? Yeah, I will no. say the same thing again. Israel does not want to commit suicide by having Hamas and having Iran and having Hezbollah type people run the West Bank like they run uh, Gaza. That type is it. People. Uh, I, I people. have always been for two states. Most Israelis were for two states. There is almost no one left in Israel who agrees with you, including the Israeli left. You live in a make believe why they, world. Why are they Hamas the Dennis, why are they the, they the type of people who can't govern themselves? What does that mean? So if you notice, Jenk got exactly what he was looking for, which is something that he could build a straw man off of because he can't argue the issue. You can hear him saying type of people, type of people while Dennis Prager is talking. But if you listen to what Dennis Prager said, he said that they don't want Iranian regime type of people or Hezbollah type of people in this other portion because no state would want an enemy state right on their border, especially if they could help it. But Jenk is turning this into why are they the type of people, as in making this about the human, not human situation, which is never brought up. It's not the case. He just made that up because he can't win this argument that can't govern themselves. What do you mean that they're the type of people yes, who can't govern elect, themselves? They would elect vicious terrorists to kill Israelis. That's whom they would elect, and Israel why? is not for it. Why would That's they be correct. different than all other human beings? Why, why, why would they're they be not different, different from all other human beings? Iran has that. But too. they used Said that they cannot govern themselves and they will elect vicious terrorists. That's right. Unfortunately, because the, the worst of them 
are dominant, just like any. So Dennis points out that the worst among them, the most radical, if you want to make that argument, are the ones that are dominant. And again, this is proven out by the fact that they did elect Hamas. Like that did happen. This isn't even a theoretical situation. The Israelis did try the thing that Jenk wants to try. They had an election. And guess who won? The most radical. And one of the unfortunate things about the Palestinian territories, because there's good people in them by far, is the fact that when more moderate voices come to the forefront, they get killed. So they can't advance as a people because they're killing off that opposition. So yes, the worst among them run the country and they rule with an iron fist. These are authoritarian areas. It's not a mark against all of the people, although the majority of the people, or at least a plurality, elected these people as their representatives. Just like Netanyahu most Iranians, and, most and all Iranians. the thousands that he murdered. Okay. Okay. What? What? He murdered? Yeah, Wait, you, I mean, you do a war and you have a kill ratio of a thousand, sometimes a hundred oh, to one, so, sometimes even so, more, and that kills kill thousands of Palestinians and go, oh, golly gee, did I kill all of them? It was an accident an when the terrorist Ar Arabs who can't govern kill. themselves, who are vicious okay. terrorists, they do it, that is terrorism. When the state of Israel does it, it is not okay. terrorism. When and we killed a hundred times more, but it is not terrorism. We bomb in the middle of a crowded city and murder their civilians, but that is not terrorism because the state does it and people Dennis Prager likes does it, but the Arabs and the Palestinians Palestinians are vicious terrorists by nature and can never govern themselves. Boy, advocate for freedom, Dennis, you're doing great. Some, somebody should add up the amount of time I got to speak and you got to speak on this segment here. Uh, your notion that kill ratio determines morality is really uh, is, is really pathetic. Again, Dennis Prager with the very chilled out response where he just goes over the fact that Jenk is filibustering. He's desperately and pathetically filibustering. He's morally grandstanding. And that's because Jenk's point is totally and completely idiotic and indefensible. The idea that proportionality makes moral justification is patently absurd. If after Pearl Harbor happened, where around three 3,000 Americans died, we as the United States of America didn't take that as a full incitement of war, a declaration of war in the United States by the Japanese, and we just went and destroyed some of the Japanese ships and killed 3,000 Japanese. That would not have solved the problem. That would not have made us equivalent. The fact that we did more didn't make us morally inferior to the Japanese because you have a right to defend yourself against an attack. And if you are attacking somebody and you're not successful and you're buffoonishly weak in comparison, then maybe you should stop attacking that person. If 10 people try to break into your house and you had your firearm with you, but they managed to kill one of your relatives before you blew all 10 of those people away with your defensive firearm, that wouldn't make you the immoral one in that situation just because your kill ratio is 10 to 1. The people who aggressed upon you got what they deserved in that scenario and the death Death that you suffered, the loss that you suffered, is in no way morally equivalent to the losses that they suffered because they were the aggressors in that scenario. You have a right to defend your territory, you have a right to defend your family members, you have a right to defend your existence, and you have a right to defend your country. And if people continuously aggress on any of those things, you have a right to stop them with the force necessary to do so. We killed far more Germans than Germans killed Brits or Americans. Does that make America wrong in World War II? If kill ratio is your criterion, I'm curious, was America wrong? So right there, Dennis Prager asks an absolutely amazing question. It cuts right to the heart of the issue. And while I use the Japanese example, because I seen this video and I didn't want to double up on his point, but I wanted to give you the same kind of analogy. It's really clever of him to bring up the Germans during World War II because Jenk does not want to answer this question. The United States and Britain lost fewer people than the Germans did in World War II. And according to Jenk's kill ratio argument, that would mean that the Germans were more moral. Now, of course, the Germans were run by the Nazi party and Jenk doesn't want to bite that bullet. So he's totally going to sidestep the question because Jenk is so weak and so pathetic and so disingenuous that he won't bite the bullet on the thing that he set up. Perfectly executed Dennis Prager right to the heart of the issue. He may have spoken far less, but each of his words are more valuable than Jenks, and this is proof positive of that notion. No, Dennis, it depends on disproportionate what, power. What you know who had disproportionate power? The Germans over the Jews. They had disproportionate power, and the state did it. The state of Germany did that to the Jewish population, to the Polish population, to all of those different people. But you would say, no, when the state does it, it's no big deal. 
State does it, it's no big deal. That's not terrorism. Only with civilians. Well, could Jews have fought back against Hitler and done it with great violence and tried to bomb him and kill him? Could they have done that? Would that have been a morally uh, conscious thing to do? Okay, it has nothing to do with anything we've discussed. Well, I don't understand your question. If the Jews could have bombed Hitler, should they have? Yes. Is that your question? Yes. Yes, they should have. So Jenk thinks that he found a good way to bail him out of this situation by saying, oh, could the Jews have fought back against Adolf Hitler? And Dennis Prager says yes, because Dennis Prager isn't putting himself in a position where he has to bite a bunch of uncomfortable bullets. However, Jenk is about to twist himself into a knot because now that Prager has said, yes, you can fight back if you're Jewish during World War II against Adolf Hitler, Jenk doesn't realize that he is now framing the Israelis as the Nazis. So if you're, so you're being oppressed, so you if you're being oppressed, if you're you being oppressed, you get to bomb the people oppressing you. Comparing, are you comparing Israel to Hitler? I won't even argue with you. I just no, want no, to no, no, I'm asking you a simple question. You I'm not drawing not. a comparison. Are I'm just you, asking you a simple question. Not. If you're being oppressed no, 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 as the Jews no, were in Germany, are you allowed to bomb and kill your oppressors? I won't argue with you. I want it yes or no. Are you comparing Israel to Hitler? So make no mistake, Jenk is making that comparison, and he's also justifying terrorism. He's saying it is okay for the Palestinians to bomb the Israelis, and they target civilians in these bombings. They're not fighting army versus army or anything like that. They're not even just sneak attacking the Israeli soldiers. They're attacking civilians in the nation of Israel. And Dennis Prager's like, I don't even care about your question. Is this what you're doing? Say it. And it reminds me of Damon Targaryen in that episode of House of the Dragon, which is absolutely wonderful. No, I'm asking the state power count. So you're not, there's no, no I'm asking the state power count as terrorism. I think it does count. I think when the Germans killed all so those people, that was terrorism. Defense. I think when America and Israel and Russia invade other countries and kill civilians, that's also terrorism. Doesn't that make logical sense? No, not at all. Israel defends itself. End of issue. So you can actually see the desperation in Jenk's eyes. And the reason why you can see this desperation is because Jenk actually does believe the Israelis are the moral equivalent to the Nazis. And Jenk sees the Nazis as subhuman that need to be killed, which gives you an idea of why he's excusing the bombings and the terrorism from the Palestinian people. What a surprise. Jenk is projecting the lack of humanity he feels about the Israeli population on to Dennis Prager. And for those of you who have bought into the propaganda that somehow the Israelis are the moral equivalent to the Nazis because they're oppressing the Palestinians, let me explain to you how stupid that is. The Nazis wanted to eradicate the Jewish people, which by the way, a bunch of these Palestinian leaders, especially Hamas, pledged to do. It's what Iran pledges to do, but whatever, we'll set that aside. We're talking about the Israelis. Right now, the Israelis have the ability to wipe out the Palestinians. What do they do with that ability? They don't wipe them out. In fact, Israeli interventions are meant to be as proportional as possible and cause as little damage as possible, which honestly I think is a terrible strategy because what ends up happening when you get attacked and then you respond and then international pressure tries to limit that response is essentially you're lowering the barrier to entry for violence from the Palestinians. If the Israelis crushed the Palestinians, they killed all the leaders of Hamas the first time, then this conflict would go much faster. Think about how much longer World War II would have went if we actually did what I suggested earlier, which is just attack some Japanese ships and try to kill around 3,000 of them in response to Pearl Harbor, and then the Japanese would have attacked America again, and then we would have been back and forth and back and forth, and we would still be fighting the Japanese. This is essentially the situation that the Israeli government is in, and honestly, you can't fight a war like this, and it's essentially prolonged the conflict to such a point where people have started to lose sight of who's the aggressor and who isn't. That's literally what the Germans said. We must defend the homeland. Okay, so you are comparing the Germans okay, and Israel. I'm comparing state power to state power. You're right, saying well, no, individuals it's are terrorists, case. Arabs are terrorists, but the Israelis are never terrorists and the state is never terrorist. This, this is mind boggling. It's worth it. I'll play it on my show. You'll get a lot of publicity. All right, fantastic. Cenk, just bite the bullet. Stop being such a coward. Stop being so weak. Stop being so embarrassing. Dennis Brigger is pointing out that you're comparing the Nazi government to the Israeli government. You don't want to say that you're doing 
doing that. So you're like, oh no, I'm talking about state power and blah, blah, blah. But I, I try to use this specific example. Just say that you're comparing it. It's it's okay, Jenk. You could say it's an analogy. Like one of the things that I hate whenever you make an analogy is when people say those two things in the analogy are different as if that's not the point of the analogy. You can get out of this, Jenk, or you could bite the bullet and say what you actually feel, but you're too cowardly to do so. And Dennis Prager's like, no, it's fine. I, I I like this conversation. I'm gonna play it on my radio show. It's super amusing. And Jenk's like, oh, let me let me change the subject and get a load of what Jenk changes the subject to. Okay, so Dennis Prager, who does not believe in freedom, just for Palestinians. Everybody else, enjoy. Maybe you live under a Christian nation, and maybe that means governing you, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's optional. Okay, we'll see. Except they say govern. Except you know that every Republican says, I don't believe in a separation of church and state. I've seen it a thousand times. You're being totally disingenuous if you don't say that. You know that that's what they say, and that would be a religious oppression of the rest of us. We're not interested in the religious oppression. We're not interested in oppressing women and saying, hey, you have to serve us in the home. We're not interested in any of that oppression. When Ironically, when Dennis, what when we when want on the left is freedom, and for all of you right wingers to get out of our damn lives. Yes. So I was pointing out the hypocrisy of what Cenk was saying the whole time, and then he just brings it up in stark contrast to what he was just saying. Remember, Palestinians electing Islamic terrorists that rule the Palestinian territory through Islamic law, freedom. That's freedom for the Palestinians. That's freedom, and if you don't like it, you think they're not human, and you think they shouldn't elect a government because for some reason you think they're subhuman. But then Cenk has the audacity to say that Christians who say that they want a Christian nation or Republicans who say that they want a Christian nation, which doesn't necessarily mean governed quite literally by biblical law. It just means the moral principles in the population with the secular government, as Dennis Prager is advocating for. You know, the person that Cenk is talking to. Those people want to oppress women, oppress minorities, but again, repress religious minorities, but specifically make sure the women know their role in the home he's advocating for a traditional islamist religious government and then talking about how americans are too much trying to put women back in their home think about that and you have anna kasparian being the cheerleader as jank needs that support because he's 100 percent losing this exchange saying yeah that's right the left wants freedom the freedom to control every aspect of your life in every possible way censor your speech cut off your payment processors that's totally freedom shut up anna shut up jank you're embarrassing let's get to dennis prager's response so i understand how you operate you have these long monologues you go from subject to subject and we can't analyze any one of them. I asked you when Christians were in power in this country, did they ever force Christianity upon anyone? So what do you, well, I don't know what you're talking about when you say they don't believe in separation of church but and state. But that's why I love America. Where, that's where, why, but Dennis. You have a United States Congresswoman, Lauren Boebert, giving incessant speeches about how the Constitution doesn't say there's a separation of church and state, it completely rewriting the Constitution and spreading this ideology that this is, should be a Christian nation. That is wrong. Okay. If you genuinely believe in freedom, as I do, as Jenk does, as most right. normal people who love America do, you should not force your religious you doctrine on others. So again, you have Anna Kasparian chiming in with some of the most worthless commentary you could possibly have. She's like, you have a congresswoman saying that the constitution doesn't say separation between church and state which by the way dennis prager points out that it technically does not say that now it does say congress shall make no law protecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof which is the separation of state in ideology with the church but it's not necessarily ironclad said there where we get that from is thomas jefferson's writings on the issue so lauren bobert is probably saying that to imply that the constitution was meant to be a christian nation or whatever, which is untrue. There was plenty of different denominations of Christian in the United States, a bunch of deists, and a bunch of atheists at the founding. They didn't agree on anything when it came to religion. All they agreed on was that the federal government shouldn't establish nor prohibit the free exercise thereof of a religion. So that's what we consider separation of church and state, but the phrase separation of church and state doesn't actually appear in the Constitution, if you need that clarified. Okay, if you're on the left as opposed to liberal, you don't believe in a free nation. I don't. I reject that, because you you suppress dissent. No, we you're don't. on you're our, our show. show. <laughs> We're not suppressing dissent right. at all. You're right. Well, I don't get a chance to speak much, but you're right, and I honor that, and you are exceptional. All right. In we, this regard, you're an exception. But it has nothing to do with the generalization that the left suppresses dissent. It doesn't. That's true at every university, and it's true at every corporation. Conservatives fear losing their jobs. Liberals do not. 
Okay, all that is, uh, again, we disagree, but now we're five minutes over, and you've been very patient. So Prager hammers his final point home about how the left suppresses dissent. He talks about how they are an exception in that they're having him on, and he does appreciate that because Dennis is always very graceful and gracious to the people that he's talking to that allow him to speak on the ideas that he's talking about, even when they're trying to straw man and they're being nasty and they're trying to make clips in order to make them look good, but it's really embarrassing. But he gives them credit where credit is due before hammering the point home that universities, corporations, and all these different institutions censor on behalf of the left because that's what the left wants, censorship. But overall, clips are amazing. The contradictions among Jank, Jank trying to win the debate by saying the most words, absolutely pathetic. But I will thank the Young Turks and Jank Uger specifically for giving me a ton of laughs and some great content that I could cut up, slice up, break down for you guys out there. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show me by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me laughing at Jank and Anna failing to go after Dennis Prager. Till next time.